Hey guys, and today we're talking about the Emacs Easy Pilot Kit. Um, when I saw this come out, I really wondered, like, who is this for? Does this have a place? There's other kits on the market. What's so great about this one? Um, but I wanted to get my hands on it, give it a review, tell you guys what I think. And, uh, well, this is the best way to get a beginner into FPV. Emacs has come up with a specific mode included on this. Uh, and it comes with this pretty good controller. It's uh, better than like the ones that come with the Ishin kits. I'll say that right now. Um, it's powered by an 18650, which I really, really like. But the notable thing about this is when you put it into that beginner mode, your left stick becomes pretty much just throttle. And it's very toned down. It's like very easy. It won't really send you flying into the ceiling that much, which is really nice. And then um, when you have it in the beginner mode, you essentially get pitch forward and back. But when you turn to the left and the right, it's not roll. It's like a combination of like yaw and and like very little roll. So you're flying. It ends up coming a little bit more like a video game. And uh, it's like real. I could not fly at line of sight like that. I just couldn't get my mind around it. But when I put the goggles on. Um, it's like, whoa, this is really easy for a beginner. A lot of times you hand someone um, something and they can maybe fly it line of sight, but they have the opposite problem. It's too disorienting when they're doing FPV. And it's like the way that we have our sticks traditionally on a mode two, you know, with the pit or with the throttle and yaw on the left and pitch and roll on the right. It's just too hard to wrap your brain around it right, like that quickly. So this really gives someone the opportunity to get enough packs in to build that confidence, to build that connection, that fun, to make you want to push harder. And it comes with everything you need to be able to get up in the air. And because of that, um, I would really recommend that once you are very comfortable with your throttle management, go ahead and click that right switch all the way towards you to put it into advanced mode. That's what um, us FPV pilots are familiar with as acro mode or manual mode. That is really how we fly um, crafts, you know, in our hobby. So once you feel confident that you're not going to shoot it straight up into the ceiling, go ahead and try that out. And then once you have mastered that flying around your house, you're going to be ready to graduate to something even more powerful. But I think you'll be able to just continue to get a lot of fun inside your house. This thing, I crashed the dickens out of it and uh it didn't even phase it there's not a mark on it the this is like a similar frame um design and uh and this material that's on the emacs tiny hawk and it's really light it's really strong and it's like not gonna mark up your walls it's white so most people have like a white wall right so it's not gonna have any it's not painted this is just like a white plastic so you have no danger of scratching scuffing or marking paint on your walls um, if you do end up graduating this controller, although it's actually pretty good, it's probably the first thing that you're going to want to upgrade. Um, but let's go on a list of the components and then we'll show you some flight feel at the end. If you want to get somebody up in the air, whether it be a family member, a boss, uh, a niece, a nephew, a kid, um, I think this is my recommendation going into 2020 for sure. It is so easy. A lot of times we want to hand somebody something like this, a tiny whoop, because to us, this is the easiest thing to fly. This is still really, really difficult for somebody that's never been on the sticks. Um, and you can see the size difference. Um, even though this is bigger, it's much more tame. Look how flat that camera angle is. And our hobby, if you know, a flatter angle, camera angle means that you can fly it slower and that's what you want. You want to fly this slow. It's not a speed demon. It's not for racing. It's for flying around your house and having fun when it's raining, when it's wintering. Um, definitely get some packs on this. Now, this does not have a tremendous amount of power. So if you do take it outside, do not fly it too high. Once you get over the roof line um, in a lot of areas, there's much harder gusts of wind. This may not be able to fight a really super hard wind. It might blow itself away. I would not suggest flying it on a windy day kind of period outside, but um, you don't really even need to. It comes with a battery. It comes with everything you need. It comes with the goggles. Um, the Emacs 
Easy Pilot Beginner Indoor Epi Racing Drone System comes with a lot in this generously sized box. Uh, first up is the transmitter. Look at this thing. Um, it is about the size, a little bit larger than your average gaming controller. Turn it on and the way that it works is once you have your quad armed, your left stick right here has an audible beep to it, it is for arming. And then your top right stick over here is for mode selection. All the way back is beginner mode, uh, intermediate mode, and advanced mode. Advanced mode is basically what us uh, drone pilots call acro mode, manual mode. Um, and that lets you do full stick manual movements. Uh, in beginner mode, it is sort of a mix of uh, roll and yaw on your right stick. And your left stick pretty much only controls... Um, up and down so it's a little bit strange for me um, because it is so different but for somebody picking it up for the very first time uh, it's going to be a lot easier for me to fly it um, there is an 18650 uh, battery inside here it comes with it already installed and you just charge it by plugging this into any usb micro i love that The goggles are sort of a basic set of box goggle. Um, Emacs on there, when you turn them on, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but when you turn them on, you get a little bit of an Emacs logo on the screen. Let's see if I can show you guys that. Yeah, check that out, pretty cool, huh? <laughs> now, um, there is actually an 18650 inside of this little battery it's an 1800 milliamp hour and it also charges via usb i love that perfect um, and it fits in a little compartment at the back here emacs is signed on the goggle strap itself um, pretty basic here the controls are just channel and frequency over here and then you have uh, m and a on this side, I don't really know what that means. There is some adjustment to be able to move the uh, focus distance lens in there, forwards or backwards. Comes with a single antenna that you plug in, so I think you can put on another antenna uh, if you so choose. The view is perfectly usable um, for starting FPV. You could get by flying these for, for some time. In the box, you have some extra props. A little tool set with some little gummies and a tiny little screwdriver. You also get USB cord to be able to charge those items. Some brief instruction telling you the modes and how to arm it. And some stickers if you'd like to decorate uh, this little thing in any way. I like how they give you six different options of how you want it to be able to look. Very cool. Now this is a brushed micro kind of a whoop style um it's a little bit larger than your standard like tiny whoop like for anybody that actually flies um micros this is a 65 millimeter size whoop um, so it's it's closer to like a 75 millimeter i believe these are 40 millimeter props if that gives you any indication on size um, these are brushed motors um, you can see that the motors are held in place um, very nicely by this frame um, this frame is very durable. I've been crashing the junk out of this thing, as you can see on the flight footage in just a minute. Um, these are like some Emacs version 40 mil props. Very nice. They're very similar to like the Beta FPV uh, 40 mil props. Comes with this 450 milliamp um, battery. Um, this will, there's no OSD on this craft, so it's kind of hard to tell how long you've been flying. Uh, and then it comes with this very simple single um, USB charger that plugs into this. Now, one thing that I did have on the downside uh, is let's, you know, if I plug this in, I'm charging it. When I take this off, look what happened there. The connector from the charger came off with it. So you just have to pull it off. And it, but the thing you have to remember is... When you're putting it back on here, there's a little indentation on this charger. That is where the slot is going to go that's on this connector. So if this happens to you, you know, just push it back on, but make sure you push it on in that orientation so that you don't get the positive and negative terminals crossed.
You have a, a tiny little receiver in here, or the video transmitter. So you can change the channel on that by pushing the little button that's inside there. Here's your video antenna out there, and then the receiver antenna must be somewhere in there. Um, I think this is like the same camera that they used on the Tiny Hawk. And uh, it works you know, perfectly fine. It's not the best, but I mean, for the price point, it's pretty good. As you can see, it's a very low camera tilt. Uh, and for those that are not experienced, a low camera tilt means that it's easier to fly slow. And that's what you want. You want to be able to fly this in your house. Um, the, um, the props are totally protected by this type of frame. I mean, it can just absolutely take some abuse. Um, this is one of the better beginner um, remotes that I have seen. Here, here it is next to an Xbox One controller. Uh, if you want to get some reference for the size on it, see it's a little bit bigger than this Xbox controller. The gimbals are not the best. I mean, but what do you expect? They have to be able to save some money somewhere. It actually feels really good ergonomically in the hand. Um, of course, they're not going to be as good as like a premium radio, radio, but like my jumper costs more than this entire kit. So, you know, bear that in mind. Uh, this is perfectly good for getting you up and flying. I'm not really sure if this will allow you to bind with other things, but if you like flying this, you know, once you put 20, 50, 100 packs on this thing, radio is probably what I would suggest upgrading first. It has your standard little uh, Whoop 1S connector on there. These, but it's like, it doesn't really matter what size or how powerful these motors are. This is for beginners. You're not gonna be going fast. It's a really good option. Great job on this Emacs. They, in the last couple of years, are really, really engaged at getting that beginner pilot into FPV. And they spend a lot of time, research, development, and putting out products like this. You know, how can you spend 120 to $140 and get a quadcopter, a radio, a set of goggles, batteries for all of them, charger for all of them, some extra tools, some extra props for such a low cost. Like they're not, they cannot be making that much money on this. They're doing that to get more people into the hobby because once they're into the hobby and they have found a reliable and a trustful company like Emacs, um, they'll continue to keep um, participating and that's what we want. That's what a lot of companies have tried to do recently. Um, but I think that Emacs so far has been the most successful. I'm going to get my hands on the eSheen Novice Kits very soon. In fact, I have those. Um, so stay tuned to my opinions on those. But I think for the absolute beginner, I don't see how you can get any easier and any tamer than this. Great job. Thanks, guys.